Well, I've always loved to write. Uh, I've always loved sports. Uh, I'm a huge Cubs fan, Cubs fan, as everyone seems to know. So that just as being a sports writer is, is was my goal ever since I was like in middle school. So, but it's been a dream come true for me to be able to do that for the past almost ten years, I guess. I'm a very high functioning uh, uh, person with cerebral palsy. Some people uh, just just aren't able to aren't able to do anything for themselves uh, because of cerebral palsy. So it just affects different people in different, different ways. You plan during pregnancy of what you think is going to be the uh, normal child and, and how things are going to go and you read books and, and all and then when your child's born and with a disability um, suddenly the, all the plans have changed and you feel probably not as equipped as, as you'd like to and uh, out there on your own and I had uh, had children with disabilities in my classroom. I taught music and, and had all levels. And uh, I also have a brother that's mentally handicapped, so I was familiar with handicapping conditions, but uh, when Ryan was born two months early and we really didn't know what developmentally he was going to be or, or physically, um, we didn't know until he was about six months old when he got a diagnosis. I remember when I was five, I'm 36 now, uh, I was putting him in a in a uh, in a in a mental handicap class. Obviously, uh, uh, obviously, I'm not mentally handicapped, but I'm a lot more independent than a lot of people with cerebral palsy. My girls have come in and out, uh, helping me with uh, daily needs, cooking and cleaning and stuff. And so it's uh, showering and, and and dressing and stuff. Kids. Kids today, they have no idea <laughs> uh, what uh, what life was like before the ADA. And uh, people, disabled people, were excluded just because they were disabled. It wasn't because people were being mean about it or anything. It just the uh, the uh, I, I I guess just the education level had not caught caught up to society yet. Maybe a lot of people, disabled people, don't have goals because they don't think they can reach them. I don't know, I mean, I was just lucky to have parents who pushed me hard and, and uh, you know, uh, if they can find people to, people to push them even when they don't want to be pushed, that's kind of a big key to, to success in life and stuff. We had some interesting little uh, things happen. The entry to this one barber was, uh, the sidewalk was slanted at a 90 degree angle to the entrance they built to the a ramp. Shop. They built a ramp so I can get in. Yeah, so Ryan Ryan knocked on the door and yeah. said, I wanted a haircut. I'll be back on Saturday and you better have a ramp built so that I could get in. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they did. did. <laughs> <laughs> he has surpassed all of our expectations in life. Absolutely. Um, my husband's mother passed away before she was able to see him uh, live independently and uh, she always was afraid and worried for his and we just somehow knew he was going to figure it out and we were all going to get there and uh, and he's far surpassed anything uh, education wise we knew he had the ability mentally but it's getting outside and getting in life and expressing yourself and living every day and uh, after four years of college and he wanted to go on for a master's degree so uh, and he went to Ball State, and, and uh, we were glad that he was motivated and wanted to do those things. We didn't have to to uh, encourage him too much. He wanted to do things, so that's for any parent, for any child. But uh, yeah, he's he had if he hadn't had the fire under him, it wouldn't he wouldn't be here like he is today, for sure.